Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 3 of the Applied Energistics series. Today we're going to be talking about subnetworking and why it's so valuable and such a major improvement when we're talking about Applied Energistics. If you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz, it really does help us out and we'll hop right into it. So here in front of me I have two identical systems. They are 18 different devices on the network and I can see that by looking at our smart dense cable. We talked about that last episode. We set up a trio of these last episode so if you haven't seen that I will put a link here so you can go back and watch that. But that is a way to set up automation. So now we're going to take automation to the next level and put it on a sub network. And why do we want to do that? Well primarily because it takes up a lot of channels to do automation. And what I can do with 18 channels here, I can place one block here and do the same thing with two channels. So I have one set of these with, of 18 different machines all connected to the network and it functions perfectly fine. And I have another section of the network that is a subnetwork and it has 18 different machines on it and it is connected to our main network through two channels. So the ability to create a subnetwork that uses and utilizes less channels on our main network is a massive boon when we're talking about large scale automation that we'll get to at the end of a playthrough of MC Eternal or something of the sort. The process itself is very simple. This left side and this right side this is the main network, this side is the sub-network. They're actually identical up until this point. They both have power coming in, they both accept raw materials, and when those raw materials are used, they're spit out, pulverized, converted into ingots, and then dumped back into the main network. The difference happens is that this sub-network is attached to, as its name implies, its own sub-network. It's a network entirely separate from our main network. It is a whole other ME controller, and that whole other ME controller is doing one thing and one thing only. It is setting up the automation of these things and dumping the products back into the main network. So I'll go over really briefly what we need to do to use this. Primarily, we actually just need two chests. One's going to be our import chest. One's going to be our export chest. Items are going to come in. So they're exporting out of the main system into the chest. So this is our import chest. Even though we're using an export bus, we are exporting out of the main system and importing it into the subnetwork through this chest. That chest imports it from that chest into the subnetwork. The subnetwork then has the items on store that are coming from the main network. It sends them out to processing, just like we did with the last last episode, where we get in raw materials, the, the sawmill, or the sag mill processes it, then our alloy smelter converts it into ingots, and we have ingots go back into our main network. So we can see processed ingots here. On this sub-network, all those processed ingots come back out and they come into this chest, which is our export chest. So we're exporting out of the subnetwork into this chest, and then we are going to be importing from the subnetwork back into the main network. The only two things that require power on the main network are this first export bus where we take things out, and the second import bus where we put things back into the network after the subnetwork has entirely automated and processed those materials. So I'll go through the, the steps step by step, uh, but, but the process is fairly simple and it uses a lot of the things we've used before. Uh, there's just a couple caveats that we'll go through as we set this up. So the first thing that we obviously need is a pair of diamond chests. Doesn't actually have to be diamond. And for that matter, it really doesn't matter. Um, it really doesn't matter what size the chests are at all. Let me just grab an ME controller here. So the ME controller, this is our sub network. As long as we have a chest hooked up on either side of the sub network, we don't actually care what size of chest that really is. 
I use diamonds because I like the aesthetic of the diamond chest. There's really not a reason to use diamond. You can really use a wooden chest that has the standard number of slots. We don't need a big fancy uh, chest like that. After our chests are set up, we really only need a couple of things here. When we're setting up our buses here, it's going to be relatively counterintuitive because these names don't always make sense. But we're exporting out of the main network into the sub network. So then on our import chest, we put our export bus going in. And our export chest, we put our import bus going out. It's a little counterintuitive, uh, but you just have to think about how the items are flowing. We're exporting out of the main network and into the sub network. Then, to get in from these chests into our system, we need to import. We need to import from our import chest into our system, and then we need to export our export chest. So we're taking things out of the sub network and putting them into the sub and into this export chest. Let me just clear the weather here. With each one of these, we're going to want to put a couple of acceleration cards and a couple of capacity cards. You can get away with three acceleration cards and one capacity card if you're only doing a certain number of blocks, but this is a fairly standard setup of having all nine squares open for import, export, and two acceleration cards. We can, uh, we'll go over what what items we need to import and export in a second, but we need to set up that same thing on each of the imports and export buses. So we'll go ahead and do that really quickly. So now each of our buses has two capacity cards and two acceleration cards. By the way, if you need to find those, they are both a part of Applied Energistics and they are made up, if you come down here to search, they are made up from Flux Crystals and Advanced Cards, which um, you should have a ton of these by the time you're into Applied Energistics. So the raw material investment of these two cards, really not that great. Um, I just wanted to mention that you can pretty much search for anything that I'm using here in this search bar and it'll tell you what is required to make it. But we're not really using anything new from last week, so we'll go ahead and do the power. I'm just going to pull this over here. I'm probably not going to set up the a third version of this. This is just going to be the sub-networking part of it, so... I'm just going to go ahead and connect the power, and then we're going to draw this out, pretending like we have a bunch of uh, automation happening on it. So we connect our automation to the sides of our, our container. And then if we have any um, storage concerns, we, we really don't have any storage concerns. You don't have to do this. But if it makes you feel a little more comfortable, you can put an ME drive there and just throw a couple of storage cells in it. Um, this system should not contain any actual information. The system shouldn't contain any actual items. Once it's processed, it'll be immediately exported. Um, but it doesn't really hurt to have a buffer on the system at all. Uh, we can add a crafting terminal if we so choose. Um, we, we don't really need to, uh, but I will go ahead and grab it and just show how that works. We can go ahead and put this crafting terminal off to the side. And this is the crafting terminal 
of our sub network. There's nothing fancy that goes on here. This is just going to show things that are actively within the sub network. Now to do just a little bit of homework on the wiring and how this is going to work. On our export bus, so we're coming out of the main system here, we want to be importing ores. So let's say we're taking in copper, gold, and iron ores. We're going to be turning them into copper. So once we export them out of there into the diamond chest, we need to import just those same three ores. Which one did I miss? There we go. Those same three ores into our sub network. Then the sub network is going to process those ores. And we'll see exactly how functional that is. I'm going to break off this thing just so we see that it happens on the sub network here. But I'm going to go into the main network and drop these three ores here just so we can see the byproducts that are coming off. We see that the ores are added to this sub network here. We got an iron ingot that's already being processed. We can see the alloy smelters and, and sag mills that are working. Again, I will put a link in the description for the previous episode where we talked about this automation process. But the things that are happening on this sub network is we're getting ingots, a copper ingot, an iron ingot, a gold ingot, and we should actually get some smooth stone as well. We have a few byproducts of, of this process and how, how it goes through. So I'm just going to put all of those things into our export bus so it knows to pull those things out. So that's an iron ingot, a copper ingot. I think I've failed to actually grab the gold ingot. Uh, smooth stone. Let's see if I can snag a gold ingot. Nope. That's okay. I can grab it out of the main main terminal here. So these are our four byproducts of a vast majority of the of the processing. And we're going to put those same four byproducts as coming out of the system on our import bus. Then all we have left to do is to simply connect to the system. So after we connect our system back over here, we can see that we have four channels coming in on this 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 lime smart cable and this would be supplying a further 18 if I had chose to set up the further 18. So rather than have one setup of 18 different automation machines that takes up 18 channels on our system. We have one line that comes off and as of right now we are only using 4 of 32 as opposed to 18. So this is really showing off the power of the sub networks. This can be used from anything from automation to item transport. There's lots of different unique uses of it but the point is that you can take things in and out of areas um, put them into subnetworks, process them on the subnetworks, and then connect it back to your main uh, data. So if I break this, so we're not using our main one here, if I go ahead and offload, say, from a mining ship all of this ore that I have, it's still going to go into our main system just like it normally would, but it's going to be processed via a subnetwork. going to be processed via sub network and then dumped right back into our main network. All of the ores that we collected are still coming back to our main network. We're still getting all of the the ingots that are a byproduct of the ores that we collected, but we're costing ourselves a lot less channels. So if there's any questions on this, I know Applied Energistics can be a little bit confusing. If there are any questions on Applied Energistics, if you have any questions about the automation process, go ahead and look down in the description. You can find the link to that video. But if you have any questions about Applied Energistics or anything like that, please leave me a comment down below. I'm always more than happy to help. 
you can find a link in the description for our Discord. You should go ahead and join that. There's a ton of people that know Applied Energistics in there, and we love having people come in and chat with us. Feel free to check out our Twitch. You'll find a link in the description for that as well. We stream every week. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help us out, and hopefully we'll see you next week.